Hello, in this video I'm going to be dispelling a common misconception that Atlantis was destroyed by a tsunami. And I'm going to show that the geography of Atlantis, as described by Plato's narrative, would have provided natural protection against such a form of disaster, a form of destruction. <clears throat> and so the, 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 it's, a, it's a very, very common hypothesis that Atlantis was destroyed by a tsunami. And many of these theories, such as um, the, 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 the Minoan theory, for example, suggests that Atlantis was destroyed partially by a tsunami. Another theory that, that argues this is the uh, Sundalan theory, which claims that the city of Atlantis was actually destroyed first by a tsunami and then later on was submerged by the rising sea levels. And so the tsunami theory is really the first thing that comes to mind when a lot of people mention Atlantis. It's that, and the first idea that tends to come to mind is usually just the obvious idea, so to speak. And it, and I will show you why this why this idea is fundamentally flawed. And the quote "geography is destiny" was is an idea that has really been put forth by many many individuals and. One specific scholar who has uh, who has mentioned this quote is Jared Diamond, who who wanted to explain why the West became so powerful and compared to the other parts of the world, and he mentioned this idea that geography is destiny to explain it. But it's an idea that has existed long before any specific person has really articulated that in a, in a quote, and so Atlantis had a really peculiar geographical configuration. And I argue that the geographical configuration of Atlantis predisposes it to certain types of disasters and protects it from other kinds. And specifically, Atlantis was said to have been located in a, in a large rectangular plain, and that plain was itself surrounded by mountains. What does surrounded mean? Obviously, it means there are mountains on all four sides. It's not just one or two sides. It's all four sides. And then beyond the mountains was the sea. And so it actually goes on to specify that these surrounding mountains were celebrated for their number and size and beauty far beyond any which still exists. And that really, that really um, emphasizes the point that these were not just typical mountains that were maybe a few hundred or a few thousand feet high, but these were superlatively high mountains that surrounded the entire plain. And so this is what it was supposed to look like and and this even is a little bit inaccurate you have the plain and you have this the city of atlantis that's that's somewhere here and then you have a plain in which that city is situated which is right here and then you have the mountains that are surrounding the plain actually the mountains should be all around it like this and so you have the sea that's surrounding the mountains and so this is the overall geographical co co configuration. And so the idea that a tsunami could have destroyed Atlantis would have implied that the tsunami actually overtopped and rose above these mountains, which are protecting the plain and the city within it, and actually just the, the tsunami actually went over the mountains and into the plain. But because these mountains are described as being super, extremely high, that tsunami would have had to like go up over mountains that were thousands of feet high. And as destructive as tsunamis are, for example, this is the this is the geographical configuration of Atlantis as described by Plato. And these mountains were described as being extremely high. So let's let's say that these are at least like 3000 to 5000 feet, but they were probably much higher than that maybe even 10,000 feet. So the idea that a tsunami could actually go all the way over these mountains to just completely destroy the city and everything inside it is just kind of, it, it, it's just not a viable hypothesis in a way because the, the, the structure of the land itself prevents that from being a viable hypothesis. And again, I mentioned this in a previous video, but Atlantis could have actually been below sea level. This plane could have actually been below sea level by thousands of feet. Plato doesn't really say one way or another, but in, a, in the other video, I argue that that is the most likely geographical configuration of Atlantis. But here, 
the focus is on whether a tsunami is possible. And these mountains would have been like thousands of feet high. And so the idea that a tsunami could just rise above these mountains to, to drown the plane and to destroy everything within it is just not very realistic scientifically. So the, I'm kind of going over what I said before, but as I said here, I'm kind of reiterating here, the tsunami for the tsunami to have destroyed Atlantis, it would have to rise above and overtop these mountain barriers, which were likely thousands of feet high. And the tsunami that killed hundreds of thousands of people in Indonesia in 2004 in, in the aftermath of the, of the Sumatra earthquake, that tsunami was only around 20 or 30 feet high. And so if, if, if Indonesia were actually protected by a mountain barrier near the coast that was around like 50 or 60 feet high, it would have actually, nobody would actually have died in that tsunami because the problem with the tsunami is that it is destructive because, because of the fact that the coast is very low and there is no protection from the incoming waves. And so you might argue, well, that was just a normal tsunami. Mega tsunamis, which, which are usually caused by landslides underwater, can reach heights of thousands of feet. But even a mega tsunami, the highest mega tsunami that has ever been recorded, reached a height of around 2,000 feet. And so these mountains were even higher than that. And so I think that we have to just kind of reject this idea that Atlantis could have been destroyed by a tsunami. It's the first thing that comes to mind typically when, when, a, when a person who isn't familiar with the dialogue of Atlantis hears about a city that was just destroyed. And the tsunami is just that first thing that comes to mind, but it's, it's just not supported and actually contradicts the, the narrative of Plato if you actually look very carefully at it. And so the conclusion is that if Atlantis existed and it was as described by Plato geographically, it would have been naturally protected from a tsunami and hence it's very unlikely that a tsunami destroyed Atlantis.